Welcome to another episode of Out of the Blank Podcast. I'm here with Mr. Daniel Randall. How you doing? Friends with Harmon Heat, Mr. Justin Harmon. You know, when he was on here, we were, you know, he was a little bit nervous, but, you know, I like to think I opened him up like a little flower, but he did talk a little bit of trash saying that, uh, you know, he could handle the heat more than you, my boy. Hey, sometimes he can, sometimes he can. It, it all depends on the day. If it's, you know, every dog has his day, I guess. And it's pretty funny because I'm watching your guys' videos um, just because I've known Justin since maybe it was 100 episodes ago. We've been talking back and forth and staying connected. And kind of watching your guys' videos, it's so crazy to see you guys take on these heat challenges. I mean, the, <laughs> I think the best part is like when you watch America's Funniest Videos is someone getting hit in the nuts and seeing that pain aspect. When you guys are taking on these challenges, you just see immediately your face go, Oh God, like you regret something. It's like, as soon as that hits, it's just like, Oh yeah, you're hooked in. Yeah. Yeah. Cause it's, uh, you can almost see it in everybody who takes on these challenges. As soon as it, it's like the, Oh crap moment. You know, it's like, you know, right away that it's, it's really hot and it only gets hotter from that point on. That's just the beginning. So I think the face of, of like, uh, Oh crap, this is, this is going to be hard. Uh, you can see that in almost everybody's face that does these challenges, even oh. Justin. When you're taking on the heat thing, what do you usually do to prepare? Do you just drink a little bit of beer, kind of get like, you know, you know at least comfortable getting in front of the camera? Because I know that's probably got to be the difficult thing because you're being so vulnerable in front of the camera. First of all, like you don't have your thoughts with you when you're going under extreme heat. I always talk about right. when you hit that critical level, you're literally like, like just somebody hold me. Like you're like, you know, freaking out. Yeah. Yeah. It's uh it's uh i haven't really been doing much lately we've been trying to eat a lot of peanut butter supposedly peanut butter helps with the the cramps now i can handle the heat the heat's not the issue it's the cramps that you get from eating things that are that hot it's like having the worst gas you can ever imagine and you can't get out you can't get it out the only way to get it out is to throw throw it up uh but peanut butter a uh, little bit of beer more for the nerves uh justin he gets nervous on camera I did at first, but now it's, it's, it's starting to be normal to me now. What about um, when it comes to your worst experience taking on a heat challenge? Like, what would that be? Uh, well, when we did the bomb, the two bottle chugs, the second video that we did with the bomb, we chugged the whole bottle a piece. Uh, the aftermath of that video was so bad that the girls that are usually there, Carrie and Tabby, uh, they got pretty quiet. They actually started getting nervous and they were, they were asking us if we needed the ambulance and I didn't need an ambulance. I just needed to get it out of my body. But that stuff is so hot. It has extract in it that uh, even when you were, I was throwing it up, the fumes from it were gagging me and I was having a hard time breathing. So I mean, I assume, you know, to them, it looked serious, like an emergency. Um, and I'm not going to lie at a, at a point when I was over the sink, trying to splash my face with water. Uh, I was almost in panic mode because I couldn't breathe. I couldn't see it got the fumes got in my eyes. My eyes were burned. I couldn't open my eyes. I couldn't breathe barely. Uh, my stomach was on fire, my throat, my entire mouth, my lips were swollen. My face was burning. Uh, my face was tingling. I was sweating. You know, it was like, uh, it was pretty bad. It's pretty bad. It's Do you find that like, just to, I mean, does that go in your head at all when you're doing any of the challenges? Like just knowing that there's those moments where it's like you really regret everything or you just kind of forget about what it's like. Because I mean, I've swallowed uh, the raw ghost peppers, like the ones you cook with, the ones you get like in the dried bags. And I mean, I felt that thing work its way through my whole entire, from my throat all the way into my stomach, into my digestive system. And it was like just knowing that pain, but then I'll be like, I'll still do shots of hot sauce when I'm bored with like a buddy of mine or something. I know uh, yeah. Justin sent me um, devil's dust. I have no idea what that is. That's all I know is that he wrote devil's dust on it. Uh, I'm not sure what that is exactly. Most likely it's some kind of reaper ground, ground reaper into a powder. Uh, you can put it in soups. You can put it on basically anything. It's basically like salt and pepper. I put it on a spoon, a giant spoon. And I thought it was like cayenne pepper and I took a mouthful of it. And it, apparently since I didn't have it recorded, it didn't happen, but I can guarantee to you that I knocked a molar out of place because it hurt that bad. It was just like the burning was in my teeth. Like I couldn't, I was sticking my mouth um, under the uh, sink hose, trying to get the nozzle and spray all the water out, clean it out. But it was like, it was getting in the cracks. Next thing you know, I'm sitting there like yeah. 
the next day I'm like, damn, like my mouth's still on fire. Why did I do that? Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. But, but it's like yeah. You got, you got, if you get it on video, it's okay though. Cause then you get like respect from everybody. Yeah. Yeah. That, then it happened. It really happened then, you know? So, uh, but yeah, man, especially with powders, uh, it, it gets in all the cracks and crevices in your mouth and it does. And a lot of people, I don't know, like to me when I ate like Sriracha sauce or like, uh, Frank's red hot stuff like that, it's not really hot at all to me anymore. Uh, but that compared to like a powder or something that has reapers or ghost peppers ground up in it, it gets in between your teeth and it burns your gums. You'll actually feel it in your gums, your tongue everything and it burns because it lingers it sticks around for a long time uh, it's different than like mainstream stuff have you tried to uh, work with justin to be able to like make some hot sauces and stuff too like maybe turn this into like a little bit of a brand i mean you're known as spicy d and we're gonna get to how you got that name in the first place but i mean anything like i mean what i was trying to shoot off ideas to justin i was like dude we're from maryland we are from the place that is like home of the old bay i was like put that in a hot sauce. Like that is the yeah. best thing ever. Yeah. Old Bay already did that. They, uh, they did that to a bot and I had it and I, uh, to tell you it, it was good, but I'm, anyone can make it. You could literally take Frank's red hot and put old Bay sauce in it. And you have the same exact sauce as the old Bay brand. And it's a lot less than what they're charging. I think they're charging like $30 for a bottle. And it's, it's basically Frank's red hot with old Bay in it. Uh, but back to the point of uh, we we do have sauces. We've created probably I don't know six six or seven different uh, bottles of sauce, different types. I got some uh, of the, them right over there. I got the uh, the creepers, uh, the the cherry one, the cranberry creeper or G cranberry creeper, cranberry yep. creeper, and then I got the other one over there. It's called mango habanero, the Harmon. Yeah, yeah. yeah. The the mango habanero is the best one that we've made. We've had more reaction out of that than anything. It looks like the picture on it looks like something I would use for like a desktop uh, screensaver. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. We tried to give it like a tropical vibe because it's, you know, mangoes and habaneros are kind of like a Caribbean thing, uh, more of Scotch bonnet, but habanero and Scotch bonnet are pretty much the same thing. Uh, but it's more of a Caribbean vibe. So we figured we put a label on it that made you feel like, you know, you're at the, on the beach. You can put that on shrimp. You can put it on chicken. I prefer it on shrimp You can get some grilled shrimp and, but when you're doing like um like the, these videos and stuff too what do you try and create at least do you put on a little bit of like an act or a show maybe not at first i've kind of noticed from watching like your beginning videos you've been able to get comfortable more. I can sense it now when you guys go up on camera, you guys have the intro, you guys have everything kind of ready to go. So you just flow right into it. You got Justin coming, going, yeah. And then kind of leading into it. But then like, you know, there's a lot more conversation before you kind of were uptight. You were like a little bit nervous. What do you try and do now that you try and add a little bit of extra, I guess, comedy or maybe try and joke around a little bit more now that you're more comfortable? Yeah, we try to make it fun and easy. We don't want the video to be cringy like we're some some guys that are just going to be here one day and gone next. We want to – Harmon Heat is going to be around for a while. That's our goal. So I think what, what's starting to happen is we're starting to get more comfortable. We're starting to get a lot more support from people, our subscribers. So it's starting to make us feel more confident in our videos uh, because, you know, people like us. We know now that there's people who they watch all of our videos. You know, before it was kind of like a hit or miss. We were just putting ourselves out there. And before this, I didn't really have a lot of experience on camera, especially on YouTube or putting myself out on the internet with, especially without a script, because we don't use scripts and we don't, we barely edit. I mean, we, the only editing that you see is the intro. You know, when the fireball comes, everything else is, as soon as that camera comes on, we roll with it. You know, what happens, happens. So uh, I think in the beginning, it was kind of nerve wracking because we didn't really know what we were doing. And now as time's going on and we're, we're getting better and better, uh, things are just starting to be more natural in the videos. Now, who comes up? But uh, we do like to have some comedy. Who, who comes up for the challenges that you guys try and do? Like, is it all like, you know, back and forth kind of like, hey, maybe we should try this or we should do this or is, like, because I saw you guys do the weirdest thing ever. And it was like every parent 
is like, if you do this, you're like the worst parent in the world is leave your kid in a hot car. And you guys went on like the hottest day of the year into a car and chugged bottles of hot sauce and sat in there in the freaking heat. And I'm like, oh my God, like, cause I know what it's like to wear like a wool sweater and then be like very, very nervous or very, very hot. And like, it feels like your whole body is just itchy all over the place. Like that was so uncomfortable just to watch, but it was enjoyable too. Cause like you guys are sitting there like yelling at each other. Like you guys can tell you guys want to get out of the car, but it's like, you, you still want to do the challenge. Yeah. Yeah. That was, uh, I mean, we had all the windows up and there was three guys in the car, you know? So, uh, Eventually, at some point, when the humidity gets to a certain level, it's like trying to breathe in pea soup. And on top of eating some of the world's hottest peppers, we ate a reaper and, and uh, dragon's breath peppers, which supposedly dragon's breath is going to be a hotter pepper. Now, it's kind of like the chocolate butla that everyone says is the hottest pepper in the world, but no one's actually tested it and proven that it's hotter than a reaper. So being in a car that I think the temperature was over 120 inside of the vehicle, uh, and breathing and talking, uh, fully clothed, and then eating the hottest peppers in the world. When you eat hot peppers, it it makes you sweat. It gets it like uh, it has a reaction to your body that actually makes you warmer. And on top of being in the car that's 120 degrees and eating multiple peppers, hottest peppers in the world, it was it was rough. It was it was just an example of what happens to a, a child or an animal that gets left. I remember when that when that was becoming a big when that was becoming a big thing. People were leaving notes on the window saying, uh, you know, like, "Hey, don't break my car or whatever. Don't break my window. My dog is fine. The AC's cranked up or whatever." I yeah, I'll talking. be right back. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and it's um, yeah. when it comes to like the videos too. When you're doing these challenges, I know it's all like you you finish the food always before Justin is because he just sits there and like takes one little bite and then sets it down. He's going so slow and you're just like, let me get this challenge over with. Like yeah. Justin's like, I'm yeah. going to take my time, recuperate and come back to it. I'm like, that's the worst thing you want to do. You want to take it all down at once so you can just deal with the pain. And then as the pain all comes at once, it just fades away slowly instead of keep coming back and hitting you. Yeah. And see, that's exactly what I did with the first tuba terror challenge that I did. I took too long to eat it because uh, these, these peanuts, I got the tube over there. Um, these peanuts are so hot, but it takes a while for the heat to build. So what happened was I started eating the peanuts. I eat two at a time because you have to eat two at a time. Uh, you have to eat all of them in 10 minutes, but you can only eat two at a time. So uh, what I did was I just went too slow and the heat built so slowly or not really slow, but by the time I got to about 10 peanuts, it was burning so bad that I just, I couldn't, it was a, it was a mind game after that. You're the whole time in your head, you're just wanting to give up. You're wanting to quit the whole time. So I failed with about eight peanuts left. And that was solely because I ate them too slow. This time I'm going to eat them as fast as I can, get them down and get it over with. You know, uh, plus I'm a faster eater than Justin anyway. Do you try and um at least like it, it? You strike me as a guy that really has like a kind of like I guess a a, a bit of an interest in like cooking a little bit. Um, you just yeah. you, just the way you were describing the way you can put it on a certain food or like the types of sauces that you use. It comes from a different angle that like a lot of people that like to actually barbecue that like to cook up. Like I mean, for me, like if you like a chili, for instance, that is a huge thing. I mean, tailgating. I mean, you get the three, the whatever, the Tostitos, put them in like a nice uh, chili bowl, add a little bit of hot sauce in there, dude, killing it right there. I mean, any football game, a Ravens game, yeah. especially, you know, shout out to them. Mm -hmm. But, you know, that, that was a big thing. Do you want to try and maybe add on something like a spicy D's, like maybe a review or like a spicy D food kind of thing where maybe you're cooking something up that we use in maybe incorporating a challenge? Uh, it's possible. It's possible. I've been thinking about doing my own thing. Now, I do have a channel. Um, there's really nothing on it right now, but it's just uh, it's there. It's waiting. For, for ideas. Now I'm thinking about doing something in my own channel. Uh, but that that's a possibility cooking. It's I was thinking if, if I do have if I do start putting content on it's going to be a mixture of, of a bunch of different stuff. It's not going to be solely eating spicy foods and things like that. Uh, but food would definitely be incorporated into the channel. Um, I do like to cook. I love to cook. I love eating food. It's probably one of my favorite things to do is eat food. And I like cooking food for other people too. And I like seeing people enjoy the food that I cook. 
it's, it makes me feel good. So uh, cooking and eating is one of my favorite things to do. Do you ever try and take any of these challenges out on the road or something? Maybe like go to like an actual restaurant and trying to film there. Or do you guys just prefer to do it like in the home? Well, we were thinking about that, but see, we get, uh, Justin's married and you know, I'm not, I'm single, I'm not single, but I can do pretty much whatever I want to do. Um, it's kind of, it, we'd have to plan something like that, but we have thought about that, doing that now. See if I did something that would be exactly what I would be doing. It would be kind of uh harm and heat on the road type thing. Uh, like you see these guys going out to these restaurants and doing all these challenges that these restaurants have. That's something that I would like to do. I would definitely like to go to these, these places and defeat them. Yeah. I mean, there's not a whole lot down here where I live. I think every single challenge is like, you got to eat a certain amount of wings, but like all the places I try and go, because like, I mean, I got an inner fat kid in me. I want to, you know, I want to go explore these <laughs> giant, like four foot pizza challenges and all these like, you know, hottest wings in the world challenges. I want to go and travel and try it. I mean, it's cool. You get your name on a t-shirt and you get your picture on the wall. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's nothing more badass than that. I mean, even if you're going through a little bit of heartburn, it's worth it. Plus it's free if you finish it. And it's like, there's none of that yep. around here. I mean, is that common down in Baltimore? I know there's probably a few spots. Uh, right here, actually down the street from my house off Tap uh, Tapsco Avenue, um, there's a place called Champs and they have actually two challenges. They have a wing challenge that I've actually tried the sauce uh, before they put the extracts in the hot sauce they use. And that's actually a pretty hot sauce without the extract. Now, if you win the wing challenge, you have to eat all, all the wings and lick your fingers clean. And you, if you win, you get it for free and $300 in cash. Oh. Uh, they also have a challenge for a pizza. It's about the size of this table here. It's a humongous pizza. If you and one other person can eat the pizza, you also have to have five toppings on the pizza. It's probably, I don't know, it's probably close to 20 pounds of pizza for two people to consume. But if you do it, you get a thousand dollars in cash. Have you now, ever um, probably? Well, well. Besides, like maybe uh, taking on something like that, have you ever tried taking one of their challenges and morphing it maybe a little bit more badass to fit your guys' channel as well? Like, you know, if you took like um a whole thing of ghost reapers and just started slicing them up on top of a pizza. I mean, I've seen you guys do the crazy things where it's like uh, you're doing like you're you're doing the re Russian roulette with the beers. That was interesting yeah. to see. I was like, but how is that going to work? It feels like if it was in a liquid, it would just cool itself down. No, nah, no, it doesn't. It doesn't. It's the capsaicin is just, uh, I mean, you can put hot sauce on, on ice cream and it will still burn you up. I mean, the reapers now that's, that's a lot, a lot of people who don't eat some of the hottest stuff that we eat. Like you'll, you'll never understand how hot it actually is unless you eat it the way we eat it. Uh, there's at a certain point, there's nothing you can do. You just have to endure the pain. There's milk doesn't do anything. Milk literally goes in, you can taste the milk and the burn is so intense that the cooling effect of the milk that would normally cool your mouth off doesn't exist. You're just drinking, you're just drinking your milk. That's all you're doing. It's not doing anything at all at a certain point. Ice cream too. Yeah. I feel like they always say dairy does something, but I feel like it, for me, it just doesn't. I don't know what it was. I remember um, when I first ate that raw pepper that was in that bag, I was at my buddy's house. I mean, it was like one o'clock in the morning. I ended up driving home at that time. So I'm like in pain being like, you know, like when if you eat too much, like where uh, your guts extended out on top of your belt or something. It's yeah. like I could feel it move through that part of my intestine, like all the way while I'm driving home. So I'm like sitting there with like basically standing up in my car while driving, like foot all the way pressed down, like ah, like screaming basically. And um, but when I was at his house and I ate this pepper, like it, my mouth started burning, then my throat started burning, and then he's lying there holding his stomach in a recliner, and I'm sitting there like you know in the fetal position on his couch, and he was like, "If you drink milk, milk helps." And I'm like, "No, milk makes it go away for two seconds, then it comes right back." I'm like, "The main thing you got to do is just sit here and either throw it up or ride it out." Yeah, yeah, that's really the only option you have. You're gonna you're gonna waste uh, you know the milk you're basically wasting your milk because it's not going to stop the cramps at least for me it doesn't it's not going to stop the burn only like you said the only thing you can really do is wait for it to stop burning and it will that's you know a lot of people get freaked out in these challenges they go into panic mode and 
uh, like a friend of mine, he can't handle heat at all. And we did the spicy, the nuclear noodle challenge, the Sam Yang noodles, the two times spicy. And uh, he ate them and I eat them like they're nothing. I eat them. I can eat them as a, you know, a, for breakfast if I wanted to. But he ate them and it annihilated him bad. And he started going into panic mode. And uh, the first thing you think about is, man, did I just damage myself. Did I just do something to myself that's going to be a permanent damage? Do I got to go to the doctor for this? You know, and uh, just got to remember when you're eating things that hot, it only lasts about a good 10 minutes and then it goes away. And the best feeling that you get and the reason a lot of chili heads eat these hot things is that when the burn starts going away, it's the most incredible relief and feeling. It's the, uh, the uh, uh, endorphin rush that you get. It's why we eat hot stuff like that. That's why we do it. Because when we complete it, not only did we just complete a challenge and we prove something to ourselves and to, you know, the chili head community that we can eat these types of things, you get that endorphin rush and that relief that just feels, it just feels great. Now, when it comes to the League of Fire, you know, that's like a, a lot of the chili heads that do these competitions, like some of the, I guess, the major chili heads in the chili head community. Um, are you trying to get in there with one of them? I know that's Justin's goal that he's trying to do, too, is trying to show up on the League of Fire, at least a dashboard. We're in there. We're in there for the, uh, the Chug Challenge. Um, now, that, that whole League of Fire thing, it's expensive. It's very expensive to get up into the higher tiers of that because you have to buy all that stuff. And one tube of terror is like $26. Jeez. So there's a lot of guys. They just did uh, Johnny Scoville, Roger Trier, uh, UK Chili Queen, and a bunch of other people got on live and did uh, 10 tubes in a row. Now, only four people got through all 10 tubes, but 10 tubes, that's you know 260 you know, probably almost $300 just to do that. Uh, so to give you an idea of how expensive it is to get into those upper rankings, it's spicy food that they make that they take peppers and they create like the spiciest chips in the world or the tuba terra here. It's expensive to create those. So it's very expensive to, to get to that level in, in the, uh, the, uh, the league of fire, but we are in, we are in, if you look at my YouTube, uh, my picture on YouTube and my picture on Facebook, that's a card that they created with uh, that was the chug challenge uh champion card that they created for us and if you do that they'll create one for you it's kind of like a comic book look it's uh it says like kapow or a boom and it's kind of like the uh, uh batman comic books so we're in we're in so is justin and justin actually completed his tuba tear and i think it's seven points because they go by a point system in the league of fire so we both have the chug challenge and then hopefully tonight I'll join him with the uh, Tuba Terror. Do you guys have a medal or a plaque or maybe like a, a certificate of authenticity that you tried the challenge besides just a picture? I'm like, if I go through that much pain, I want my name on a fucking wall somewhere. No, you, you get recognition. You get uh, the, the thing when you complete it, you get so many people saying congratulations, you know, so many people noticing it and, and congratulating you for it. Just it's more of a uh, people thing you know it feels good to have all the support that you get from accomplishing something like that uh plaques would be cool but i think right now the league of fire is so new and it's so early in its its stages uh that we we we're more of a uh you know good job guy pat on the back right now you know but maybe eventually one day when it gets bigger and bigger and more attention to it uh they'll send out things like that but right now it's so new that i don't think uh i don't think it's possible at this time I'm looking at, um, you know, with the League of Fire and everything, I think that's a better way is that a lot of those chili head guys are kind of spending their own money to get these things. What I really kind of have a problem with is the whole factor of like these people that do hot sauce reviews. And then they just ask for people to send them their bottles so they can get free hot sauce and then try it. And I'm like, that's so stupid. I'm just like, I get it. It gets you a little bit of publicity, but there's so many people doing it out there that have this ego. Like I have 200 followers, send me your hot sauce. I'll review it. And then you give like the person a seven. I'm like, bro, you're lucky they shipped you anything at all. Like you should be reviewing them pretty good and stuff. It's like, it's a good way to pay. But like for me, like the only hot sauces I've ever got are the ones that people send me because they had such a good conversation. I'm like, yeah, I mean, guess that's doing the same thing, but I'll promote them on the podcast. I don't see you have to send me anymore. It's just because we're out. The weirdest thing about the chili community is the fact is you guys are very, very, it, 
I know it seems like there's a lot of you, but it's so new. It's just, it's, it's a hashtag. If you look it up, there's not a whole lot of people out there, but yeah. there, it's so positive because there's not that many of you. You guys can hold accountable like, hey, this guy said this about my sauce. He's not very good. You're all talking to each other. I mean, when I reached out to Justin, then I reached out to somebody else after Justin, I immediately had someone else go, yeah, I talked to Justin. He said he had a fun time. I'm like, okay. And like, next thing you know, I started finding out that everybody was connected. I'm like, it's, it's, it's new. It's going to end up changing once more people, this comes, it's starting to become a huge trend, especially now we're seeing people that are stuck inside their homes. So it's like, somebody's going to be snorting hot sauce. I've done that. Yeah. And someone's yeah. going to be trying to put it in their butthole. So, I mean, it's just going to happen like that's like when you're watching jackass no. after like, you know, so yeah. after two beers in, they're doing some crazy shit. Yeah. Yeah. Steve-O snorting uh, wasabi and stuff like that. Yeah. Well, yeah, the community, it's a, it's a chili head community. It's probably in a couple thousand people right now. Now, there's some big dogs in there that have been doing it for a little longer. They have a lot more attention, a lot more traction on their channel, like uh, Robert, Trier, uh, Robert Trier, I mean, Roger Trier, Johnny Scoville. They're up in like the 60s, going on 70,000 subscribers right now. But, uh, you know, it's, it, it is new. Like, like you said, it's a very new thing right now. Um, but, you know, it's, it's a community of the, 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 like the UK Chili Queen. I don't know if you know who she is. Yeah, I do. You know, she, in the United Kingdom, she is the world champion, actually probably in the world, not just in, in England, but the world champion chili eating uh, competition champion. So when people look up that kind of stuff, they find her and they find our community. And that's usually how a lot of people have become part of this community is people love watching people suffer eating hot things. They think it's funny or whatever they get out of it. I, I feel the same way. I think it's great thing with man versus food. It's either you want to see them take on a challenge and see if they can overcome it, like cheer them on, or you are watching and laughing because they're acting ridiculous because they're in so much pain. I mean, that's gotta be difficult to run through your head. First of all, like, even me, like I'm starting to do video or something. It's, I've still got to be like, yeah, I'm, you know, how am I, per, am I, you know, am I coming off pretentious by having my hand up here? Am I doing this? You know, it's that whole thing. But like when you're on camera and you're eating these spicy peppers, the first thought you're probably having is I don't want to embarrass myself in front of everybody that's going to be watching this. And then after the heat starts to hit you, you're like, fuck everybody else. I want to make sure I'm not dying right now. Yeah. Yeah, it's all mind game. And once you get to that point, it's uh, that's why people stop talking when they eat this stuff. They'll be all excited. And uh, if you watch the first Tuba Terra video, I was a little buzzed up. So I, I told, you know, I was extra confident. And then about halfway through the tube, I realized that uh, I couldn't, there, there was nothing to talk about anymore. It was all a mind game. It was like a pep talk in my head going on. Come on, do it, do it. You have to do it. But then it's like the devil on this shoulder and the angel on this shoulder battling it in my head. And the devil was like, yeah, you can, you fail, fail, fail. And then the, the angel was like telling me, you know, you have to do this. You can do this. But in the end, I just, I just couldn't do it. It was too hot and I lost the mind battle, you know? When um, you're going into uh, not maybe tonight, for example, like the two you are going to try, but like, do you guys have future challenges planned? Anything that you want to do, but you feel like you're just not ready for yet. I mean, I have to feel like this is a lot like Dragon Ball Z when you're training, like you're getting all pumped yeah. up. Like it's the beginning of Rocky where he's fighting the meat and stuff. You're sitting there like taking yeah. bottles of hot sauce and putting it in your eye, like clear sill or something. Yeah. 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 No, we, uh, we have, we've got stuff planned for months. I mean, this summer, spring and summer chili season is going to be it's going to be awesome we've got a lot planned uh we got a lot of sauce to be to make we got a lot of videos to make um and uh yeah yeah i mean i've got bottles of stuff here challenge worthy stuff that we still haven't done yet you know with this whole quarantine thing going on it's kind of hard for us to get together and make videos you know and uh now we've done pre-recorded videos and we've released them recently but you know like you you know to answer your question yeah we we've got we've got stuff in archives like we know we we've got things ready to go we we've learned to do that because we can't come and make videos all the time you know we he works full time job so do i and then you know i've got a lot of stuff going on so when we get together we we try to make it the best we try to actually make a couple videos at a time you we usually get 3 videos done in one night bring us pair um, sure and then we'll release 
Yeah. 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 So yeah, <laughs> add like a hat and draw like a mustache on. I guess this is a, this yeah. is a month from where we recorded yeah. the last video. Yeah. Yeah. Different shirt, different color, you know, take my glasses off in one video or something, you know, it's stuff like that. I mean, we've, we've, we got to have, you know, this is, this is a thing that we want to do for a long time. So we have to have continuous content and we want it to be as entertaining as possible. So people actually watch it and enjoy it and maybe share it with their friends. What's, what's out of all the challenges you've done? The fun, the funnest one, I would say like the one that you got, you remember the most, whether it was the amount of pain Justin was in, whether it was the amount of pain or just laughter you guys had. Uh, it's the rock scissors reaper video. The one where we got the, we got a, I forgot where I got the box of peppers from, but it's a, it's a pretty popular uh, website that they'll send you a prepackaged box of super hots and it's a ton. It's like $25. And when you open the box, there's all different colors, hot peppers. Uh, so I bought that box and we went over and we figured, I said, you know, since we have these peppers, how are we, how are we going to make a video with these peppers? How are we going to, you know, maximize our profits here, uh, to say, uh, so to speak. So we decided we're going to play a game with it. And since we had so many peppers, we came up with the idea to do rock, paper, scissors. And then we had a random generator app, a uh, number generator app where you push a button and it randomizes a number. So whoever lost, we hit the random generator, number generator, and we had all the peppers numbered. Uh, I came with a list of numbered peppers. So we just went off of the peppers and the numbers that they were already pre-selected to have. So we would do rock, paper, scissors, and whoever lost would have to random generate a number and pick a pepper. And they would have to eat one as a, as a uh, punishment. And uh, that video, I, uh, I beat Justin in like, I don't know, six out of the 10 goes. And I mean, he was just suffering terribly. I would be like, you're cheating. You're like, how the hell can I cheat? It's a random number yeah. generator. I'm like, this is bullshit. Yeah. It's rock, paper, scissor. How do I, you know? Yeah. So that one was probably the funniest one. It was, uh, I had the most fun doing that one. And if you go and you watch it, you'll see that it was actually like a really fun, lighthearted, uh, video. It was probably one of my favorite, not just cause Justin was burning, but because of it, it was uh, just fun. Yeah. Okay. It definitely. It was probably, I would have laughed. I think that would have been the funnest part for me is just watching Justin. Like, he got it again, man. Yeah. <laughs> well, when it comes to um, like ideas for challenges that you guys are thinking of, or maybe even ideas for sauces, I got one I want to toss out at you. Do a challenge where you do like a shot of hot sauce. So get a good amount of hot sauce, like something super hot, like, but very kind of liquidy just so you can be yeah. able to get like a nice swish going. So it's not super thick where you choke on it or something. Then take pop rocks and put it in your mouth. Hmm. That'd be different. Called the hot, That'd be different. the hot pop rock challenge, hot rocks, hot rocks, hot rocks yeah. challenge. Your mouth would be yeah. popping. You'd be trying to, and it sucks because when you got pop rocks in your mouth, you want to open up your mouth. So then you got the freaking hot sauce in there. So then you got two conflicting things going on. Yeah, that'd be interesting. That would be interesting. That's something I've never thought about. So that we, we, we'll probably do that. We'll probably do that. That's uh, we'll probably get something that's extremely hot, something like some Reaper sauce, you know, and then put hot pop rocks in it or something. You know, yeah. we'll figure it out. We're good at, you know, we get together. We just, our minds, you know, marinate a hot pocket in hot sauce and then stick it in the microwave and then eat it after it's been in there for like 20 minutes. So you, it, when you take that bite into it, it's like, ha, 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 like, cause it's too Absorbed. hot. You can't, yeah. So you can't swallow yeah, yeah. it. It's so hot. <laughs> Have you ever thought yeah, about um, any flavors that are going to come out for your guys sauces at all? Like um, besides the ones you guys already had, have you been kind of thinking about it? I mean, I know just from talking to Justin, he had one called Robbie's Rectum Ravager that he was thinking of. Uh, <laughs> and I was like, are you just like going to the like the grocery store and looking at all the things you could put into them? I mean, mango is a good one. It just really depends on the peppers you guys are using. Yeah, we it, it uh, yeah, it comes down to it, it's a lot in it. It's a lot more than just than just uh, like ingredients. Like we'll go to the store, we'll look around, but it starts it starts with an idea like I've been wanting, I've actually tasted a sauce recently from a Chilean restaurant and it was a pickle based hot sauce and it was delicious. It was absolutely delicious. It was like dill relish, but it was spicy, but it was in a, it was, you know, ground up more that didn't have chunks in it, but it was, 
it was incredible. I loved it. So I think what we're going to try to do, at least maybe I'll, I'll talk to Justin. Justin's more in, in charge on that uh, aspect since he's got the garden and all that stuff. Uh, but we, we, I think a dill pickle hot sauce with maybe reapers in it would be really good. Now reapers, it doesn't have to be extremely spicy. Now reapers, everyone knows reapers. Oh, it's the hottest pepper in the world. It must be too hot for me. You could, you could put less reapers in it and more ingredients of other things in it. And you can still get that level of heat, but it's not as killer and doesn't last as long. So it doesn't linger. The more reapers you put in a sauce, the longer the sauce will linger and burn in your mouth. Now, uh, I just think that that would be a, a really good sauce. Uh, but yeah, we go to the grocery store, we basically look around and sometimes me and him are just, you know, thinking about stuff like, oh, well, that would be good in there. And we mix it with this and we're standing there and we're looking like a gay couple or something at the at the, the vegetable aisle. And we're like, well, take this one and that one and put it in. And he's like, oh, no, I don't think so. And then, you know, so we do go through a process. It does take a little while to think up these sauces. Uh, but when you taste the sauces, I feel like every sauce that we've had has been better than the mainstream sauces that you can get at the grocery store. Every single one of them tastes better than what you can get at the grocery store. It's because a lot of the mainstream sauces that are out now are just like, they're not tasteful. They're just very popular. I mean, the only reason people buy Tabasco is because it's known as a hot sauce. I mean, I've had from, and I'll give them, I'll give these guys a shout out. David from Way Hot Hot Sauce. Um, Jeff Levine from Silk City Hot Sauce. Two Angry Cats, a sponsor of the podcast. All three of those guys send me some sauce and I promote them just because they're good dudes. Their sauce is amazing. Um, you know, everyone I've had so far from nukes, hot sauce has been on here, you know, like just from talking to those guys, getting to know them and then having tried their sauce is what I would buy if it was in my store. Cause the thing is you're buying a product that's on a shelf, but you don't know who's making it half the time. Like Tabasco, it's so watered down that you basically have to use a lot of it to get, I mean, I just went to the store at Walmart today, bought one of the, um, the law, whatever it is, the let the, the Latero, whatever the, the El Valentino, whatever it's called, the giant, huge ones, uh -huh. just because uh -huh. it's two bucks. But I mean, I can kill that in a matter of a couple of days because it's not hot. It's like, you're, I mean, yeah, it, does, that, it does hit me in a way. I'm not going to lie. Yeah. A lot of the mainstream sauces, uh, vinegar, it's just vinegar. It's like uh, a cayenne pepper mixed with vinegar. It's a Louisiana style. Most of the time it's Louisiana style hot sauce, like crystals or Frank's red hot. Now that's a popular flavor. People love that flavor. And a lot of us, especially in Maryland have grew up eating a lot of vinegar stuff, yeah. uh, on French fries, you know, and, and things like that. Crabs, bro. uh, crabs. Yeah. I mean, it's just in this state, especially vinegar based sauces are, they do better than other sauces. Um, I love vinegar. I'm, I'm a victim of the vinegar based sauces. I love them. I, I still buy crystals. I still buy Frank's red hots. I still got, I got that stuff in the fridge right now, but it's because the flavor is great. Now it's not hot, but it's a great flavor and it goes with a lot of different stuff. So what do you a uh, good... typically prioritize? I would say, would you prioritize the flavor or would you prioritize the heat aspect of it? Cause I like a nice flavorful one. I really like a smoky chipotle or maybe like a smoked barbecue one where you can feels like you're tasting yeah. the campfire. Yeah. But, um, you know, sometimes I want something that when I, you know, I bite into it, it's like, holy shit. Like, uh, David from way hot sauce. Um, he sent me, uh, God, what is it called? I have it on my shelf. Grim Reaper sauce. Grim Ripper, he calls it. I'm like, yeah. the fuck is like, okay, it's regular hot sauce. <laughs> so I eat salads every day. So you're basically going through your spice cabinet and you're going through all the hot sauce collections you possibly can just to change it to not taste like a salad. Mm. So I'm like dumping right. it on here. I'm like, this thing's coming out thick like sriracha. I like that. I love it yeah. like that. Um, yeah. But it really depends on what you're eating too, because sometimes you want something that is so kind of a little bit like vinegary or watery, just so when it comes out, it spreads all into the cracks and everything. Like if you have a nice uh, roast or something, you can get it in the cracks of the meat. Yeah. Yeah. And it's good for marinade definitely because it does do that. It gets into all the cracks and crevices and it's liquidy. So it actually covers the entire surface of what you're trying to marinate. So that in that particular case is, is, good um 
Now, I like sauces. I like thicker sauces. I like sauces that you have to chew. I like sauces like, uh, what is it, Hellfire Detroit. I just had a bottle on here. Um, and I ate the whole bottle. It's between 100 and 350,000 scovels, which to me, barely stung at all. Now, before it would have been super hot, but since I've been doing what I've been doing, it's not hot. Now, that sauce, it vinegar base, it's an apple cider vinegar based sauce, but it has the seeds, it has chunks of peppers in it, it has ingre other ingredients that they put in it. Like it's thick, it's like a salsa, basically. And that's how I like my sauces. I like, I prefer, I, I, I gotta try to compare them to like the mainstream sauces you get in the store to these. Uh, it's like craft beer. It's like these, these, uh, these, all these breweries that are popping up that have all these, you know, craft beers that are tastier and more expensive than like Budweiser. The same thing with these other sauces. These companies are coming out with basically craft hot sauce that is so much better than the vinegar based hot sauce that you can find everywhere. You know, it's just, they're, they're on a whole nother level. I feel yeah, like it's but, like if you get a milkshake, is it super, super thick where it won't even come out of the cup? Or is it so, uh, I guess, uh, milky that like, you know, it comes out like water. It's like, I want it that yeah. middle, but I want it a little bit more yeah. on like the, the chunkier side. Because like, like you're saying, like a salsa, that's what I feel like it should be. You want that thick consistency of it. So it kind of sticks things together and spreads it around a little bit more. But if you get like yeah. something that's so watery, it's like you go to tip over a little bit next you know you the whole thing's dumped all over with hot sauce and then it, your meal's kind of like watered down yeah yeah yep yeah what i like it i like my sauce to i like to chew it chew it yeah what do you typically prefer to uh, put hot sauce on i know i'm a big guy of no ketchup on your eggs so i'm really hoping you're gonna say you hate ketchup on your eggs uh i haven't been putting i've been putting sriracha on my eggs that's okay I like sriracha on my eggs. Now I'd even, you know, I just fry up a quick egg just here and there because it's it's quick and easy. But I usually put, uh, I just put salt and pepper on it, fry it up, and then I put sriracha on it if I'm in the mood for for that. Um, I don't, I haven't put ketchup on my eggs in a long time. I actually haven't used ketchup in You're a long man. time. You're a good man because yeah. my dad and that whole side of the family is from Baltimore. So that's all it is, is ketchup on the eggs. And I just look at them like, that's this, that's a savage crime <laughs> against humanity. That and king syrup. I don't know why that's so damn popular down there. Oh, man. King syrup on vanilla ice cream, man. I'm put you on some, some free game right here. I'm tr Trust me, dude. Don't knock it till you try it. Take king syrup, pour it on vanilla ice cream. Trust me. It's okay. some of the best stuff ever. I, I, got, I got one for you. Try uh, Olive Garden's breadsticks and then try vanilla ice cream. I did it when I was like 12 years old. The garlic and the vanilla, I don't know what it is, but it complements each other so freaking well. I remember my dad looking at me. He's like, you're giving me shit for putting ketchup on my eggs and you're doing this? Like, what yeah. devil do you worship? I was like, I don't know. Hey, man, sometimes that just stuff works like that, you know? It's like, uh, you know, I never thought about putting hot sauce on ice cream, but – when you put a super sweet hot sauce that that stings a little bit on the ice cream, it just it just works so good, so perfect that no one would ever think it. People are probably like, "Oh God, that's disgusting!" Because what they're thinking is uh, Frank's Red Hot or Crystals. They're thinking vinegar-based sauces. There's a lot of sauces out there that aren't like that. They're com completely different. They're fruit-based. Now, there's this one from Bravado. It's a blueberry ghost pepper sauce. I can't remember what pepper it is, but it's delicious. It's like uh, it's almost like blueberry syrup that you're putting on it. I, with, I, got, um, with, I got one of those. I, I think I know what you're talking about. I saw you put up a picture of it on your Instagram, but I got one. I think it's like its cousin or something. It's black garlic by Bravado. That's going to be hot. That's I, hot. I killed that bottle in a day and didn't feel a damn thing. I don't know why, but like I have the last dab sitting up here, the Howler Monkey, all those from like um, the show Hot Ones. I, my buddy orders yeah. the, every single sauce throughout the seasons. He gives me a spoonful and he's like, dude, very little bit, very little bit. I was, I was choking. I was dying from it after the last yeah. dab, just one hit. I killed the bottle in a day. I just was drinking it like it yeah. was nothing. But the only bad part was like it all hit me yeah. like a day and a half later when I had to go to the bathroom. And I'm sitting there with like my stomach like on the edge of my bed. You know what I mean? Like kind of not really like praying, yep. but kind of like yep. just like all my 
my yeah. head or whatever off the side and, of the bed. And I just felt all my stomach to start pushing it all the way down. I was like, oh, God. I went to the bathroom. It was one of those you had to take off your clothing. You had to yeah. grab the <laughs> towel in front of you. You had to pray to God you get through it. Yeah, sweating. Yeah, serious uh Push your body through some stuff. You really do when you take, you're putting this stuff in your body. But um, I tell you, when it's all over, you probably felt great. Probably felt a lot better. You probably had cleared you out better than any dump you probably ever took. I felt like I lost 10 pounds. I can tell you that. I'm pretty sure a biscuit from the third grade came out. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. See, that's what I'm talking about. (laughs) Now, with even with all the videos and stuff too, do you ever, like, I know it's got to go into your work a little bit too. Like, I know you're an exterminator, right? You're, you're, with, yeah. Uh, yeah. When you're doing that though, but how hard is it to like focus on your job because you're just thinking about maybe a challenge that you have at the night, like you're excited to do it because I mean, in the beginning of you starting these videos with Justin, it probably was like a good, like, Oh, I'm gonna screw around or whatever for the night. I'm going to do this. But then after a while you get so addicted to just the love of like doing these videos that now it's like, what are we doing our next video? What are we doing our next video? Yeah, exactly. That's exactly what it is. Uh, there's, they're like we talk to each other during the day sometimes, especially when there's a, uh, a challenge coming up that's supposed to be big. Uh, we talk to each other about it and we stay in touch. I probably talk to Justin. We don't talk every day, but we do talk a lot and we stay in touch. We're friends too. So it's not just a YouTube partnership. It's I actually like Justin, believe it or not. He's actually pretty cool. Uh, but uh, yeah, I mean, it's exciting. We get excited to make the videos. It became now at first it was something I found out he had a channel. That's where it happened. We met through a, a mutual friend and uh, his wife and my girlfriend are friends, best friends. And that's how I met them. Uh, but then it's when I first met Justin, it was like we clicked almost instantly. And then I found out he had a YouTube channel and he wasn't really doing anything with it. And he was kind of like, oh, you know, you know, we, we, he didn't really want to do anything with it or he did, but he, he didn't really know what to do. So then we started talking and then we just started, you know, we kind of winged it and now it's it's exciting we can't wait to make a video we love it have you ever denied any challenges maybe not failed them but just like an idea comes across you're like no it's dumb uh not off the top of my head now there's been a couple things that maybe we've discussed that maybe hey i've said hey should we do this or should we do that and then we'll talk about it and then we decide no it's not really a popular thing to do you know it's it's, some of the stuff's really expensive. Like a lot of the extracts that you see people doing are in the you know hundred dollar range for a small little bottle of stuff. So there maybe financially it isn't smart to do because of the the outcome of it isn't going to be great. You know when you're building a channel, you kind of want to make sure that you're getting content out that people are going to want to watch, people that are going to want to search for. That way you can build your channel. Uh, so yeah, we've we've had challenges that we've talked about doing that we decided now that's not something that we're going to do. I feel like, um, especially when you're trying all these different sauces and stuff too, it's got to give you a little bit of knowledge on creating your own sauce as well. I mean, you tasted certain sauce, like, well, I like the thick consistency of that. You look at the back, check the ingredients and see if you can try and make it into your own style. Maybe add something a little bit of like what you guys would consider your flavor to it. Yeah, exactly. That's, that's actually, you know, that's probably how most people create their sauces and their food is they, they taste other things that they enjoy. And they're like, man, that would be really good on this, you know, or it would taste better if you put some of this in it, you know, and you mix it up and, you know, that, that's how we made a lot of our sauces, you know, and the crazy thing is I don't like to brag about it a lot, but our sauces, the sauces we've made, they were like, we didn't have to keep back and changing, changing and changing it. We literally had the palate like we could taste the sauce in our mouth as we were picking ingredients and then we ended up just the sauces just ended up working the first time first time we put it in the bottle it just worked what do you find to be the most interesting part about doing it though did you like the creative aspect of it as in like trying to find out the flavors that work together and then finally finding out it works i feel like for me it's the name aspect and like the design of stuff i mean when you guys have like your your uh, your cranberry sauce for instance like that had to be fun as shit trying to think of a name for it. you're sitting there like oh man what i call it like bloodshed bastard would i call it like you're just going off on like the weirdest names but like if you notice every single hot sauce name like advertising is the main thing if you're going to get new customers does the bottle look cool does it something i mean you got all these people out here that when they have a hot sauce that they pay special money for maybe more than the average walmart brand they're Mm -hmm. like me and they have a damn shelf built for them you know what i mean i have them all on a shelf and yeah 
it's it's really the look at the bottle that tells you this might be a hot sauce or it might be a flavorful sauce. And then there's the sign of it where there's like nothing on the bottle and you're like, that's like some Chinese torture stuff right there because there's nothing on it. So it's supposed to bring you in and then kill you. Yeah. Yeah. We, uh, now like for example, cranberry creeper, the reason that name came about is because, you know, we, it's a lot of thought. I mean, I guess it's, 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 it's a lot of thought for us at least, but, uh, basically it has cranberries in it. It was a seasonal sauce for like, uh, Thanksgiving, you know, cranberry sauce and people, you know, I like cranberry sauce, but, uh, the heat creeps up on you. It's not hot that hot at first, but it builds. So we figured, you know, it's cranberries and it creeps on you. So cranberry creeper, you know, that's how the name came about. Cranberry creeper. Then what about the tropical one? Why'd you, why'd you do a mango habanero? Just because that was what the two ingredients were in it. But like, how did you get it to design like a tropical look to it? Well, because we put, you know, mango, obviously it's got mango habaneros, mangoes and habaneros in it. Uh, There's also roasted garlic in it also. Uh, But, you know, mango habanero is a very popular mixture sauces. A lot of people are doing it. Uh, My favorite, I think where it came from was I like Buffalo Wild Wings. I love their mango habanero sauce. It is probably my favorite sauce for wings in the entire world, at least from there. Uh, so I think what happened, we were talking about that and we were talking about, well, maybe we should do the blazing wing challenge. It doesn't exist anymore, by the way, at least here in, uh, the one in Arundel Mills doesn't, uh, but we were talking about them and that's where it came out. I said, well, maybe we should make our own sauce and boom, mango habanero came out. We picked the ingredients. We roasted the garlic. We, you know, the mangoes, the habaneros that were grown in Justin's garden, uh, blent it all up together real good. And, you know, it came out tasting incredible, you know, and everyone loves that sauce. What if as much as you guys drink Keystone in your videos, I'm like, why don't you guys just start up like a craft beer infusing hot sauce? Ah, uh, that would be a task. That would be a task. Yeah. Cause that's, uh, you gotta, that's because it, look like beer, beer is kind of, uh, beer is hard. It's true. To make good beer. Yeah. A lot, I've, I had a friend, uh, he actually, he does editing the video stuff down in Florida, but he started, he did his own beer when we were like 20, 21. His dad got him a brewery set and uh, we were drinking his beer for a good month, you know, cause he would have it, he would have it in these barrels. But to tell you the truth, it was disgusting. It tasted like crap. And the only reason we drank it is because it had alcohol in it, you know? That's why but, moonshine's so damn popular. You don't like the taste of it. You yeah. just taste it because it, it gets you messed up. It gets you drunk. Yeah. And if your car yeah. breaks down, you can use that as spare fuel. Yeah. You light a fire with it, you know? Yeah. So, but yeah, it's, it's, uh, the combination of the two would be tricky. It's, I mean, it's possible, but, uh, like the, the Russian roulette beer, how they did that. They had that with, uh, the spice. In it. it was a beer and it was actually not that bad of a beer, but, uh, now it was expensive. Is is crap. I mean, it was expensive. You had four beers. I think it was like twenty five, thirty dollars, something like that, which is expensive for beer for four beers. Now that's where that craft beer comes in. Uh, but to combine the two has been done. But uh, I, I don't know if Keystone would be a good pick for something like that. Not everybody likes Keystone. It's a strong flavored beer. Uh, it's ice too i don't know if you've ever had like it's Bud like ice. natural light man that's it's 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 yeah. meant to get you drunk it's not really yeah. one of those you know it's like a college kid beer like um I, i'm not a big beer guy I don't, I don't really drink alcohol but like natural light like the reason why it's so damn popular down here is because you can only spend like eight bucks and get like a 24 pack and get messed <laughs> up for the rest of the night you know what i mean yeah you get drunk with the change in your pocket pretty much exactly yeah. so yeah, it's that's basically what it is. You know, me, Justin I'm like, if, if I'm gonna get drunk, man, I want to make sure it's tasty as hell. Like, I want to make sure every sip is not like. I always quote Charlie Sheen from Two and a Half Men, where he's drinking alcohol and he's like, and the, uh, Jake goes to grab a glass of it, and he's like, "Don't do that. It'll it, it'll uh, kill your insides." And he goes, "What? Well, why do you do it? Why do you drink this? Because there's things inside of me I'm trying to kill." And I'm like, "That's yeah. literally what it is." <laughs> yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah, I uh. You know, I, there's some craft beers that I like. They're expensive. Uh, it's it's not a bad beer. Neither is near as natural light. You know, it's just if you want to get drunk, you know, it's quick and easy. 
it makes know, the videos but, uh, more fun too when you guys are a little bit let yeah. loose. Sometimes you need that. Yeah. Like I know um there's so many podcasts out there. Like it's hard to like, you know, obviously come on here, talk to someone that you, you know, don't really know and then be able to kind of like let uh, like get comfortable, you know what I mean? But like when you're, you know, if you add beer to that equation, you add weed to that equation, it always kind of, everyone's always loosen up. And next thing you know, the show's so off track. You're like, what the hell are they talking about aliens in another dimension oh, yeah. for? It's like we were talking about freaking tacos a minute ago. Yeah. <laughs> with um, Yeah, yeah, all, we got out of hand. Yeah. With all of um, just the videos that are coming out and the stuff that's going to be produced, I mean, where does Spicy D come from? Where does Extra Spicy D fall in? Uh, extra spicy D came basically because every time I order food, like if I get Chinese food that's spicy or I get something from, uh, there's this place around here. It's a, they deliver, uh, tacos and burritos. It's a Tex-Mex place. Uh, but every time I get food, I order it extra spicy. So I just figured, you know, we were sitting there and we were just being stupid. We didn't have to come up with names. I didn't have to have a name. I could have just been Dan from, from Harmon Heat. It could have been something like that, but just me being a goofy person in general and Justin being a goofy guy, we figured, Hey, let's just have nicknames and let's just, let's just roll with it and let's make people laugh. You know? And uh, I said, you know what, since I get everything extra spicy, I'm extra spicy D extra spicy Dan, you know, and boom, that easy. The Something that stupid. Fits. I mean, I knew you before I knew you as Dan. I knew you as uh, Extra Spicy D. I was like, when's Extra Spicy D going to get on this podcast? When are we going to get him on there? I mean, it took a while. I know you went on a cruise, I think, is when I sent you a message originally. But Yeah, yeah. I went to the Bahamas for eight days, man. I came, I came back home and I realized how good I had it. You know, did, you, did you shuffleboard? Down there. <laughs> did you shuffleboard? I didn't. I, I seen people playing it. I forgot the name of it. I was like, what the hell? I know what that's called. Uh, Cause they had it on the, the top deck. Yeah. And, uh, nah, I didn't shuffleboard. I, I sat there and I drank, uh, they call them strong Island iced teas. Uh, I know a strong Island iced tea. I know that one. And um, it was like, what do you find the most interesting thing about a cruise? Some, like a lot of people always freak out. Like I get sea sick or something, or you're stuck on a boat. There's nowhere to go. I'm like, I don't really ever think of it that way, but I'm like, I guess if you're sleeping on there as well, it's got to be difficult because you're just constantly sloshing around. Yeah. I think the most interesting thing about the cruise uh, was the, uh, I mean, the whole cruise is pretty interesting, but I think the sleeping now in the morning, you don't need a, you don't need a, a, an alarm clock to wake you up in the morning because when you come to port, the, the engines that, that from them ropes that pull that ship to the dock are so loud, they shake the entire boat. You're not sleeping through that. So that was pretty interesting. Um, and then on the way back home from the Bahamas, we were in a thunderstorm for two days. And the boat, every time a wave would hit the boat, it was this loud bang. And it was so loud. Uh, we were in the bottom of the boat in the front where the waves were hitting. That's where our cabin was. We had like uh, one of the cheaper cabins, me and a friend. Uh, but man, it was uh, the whole time, I think in the back of my head, I was thinking, man, we're going to sink. You know, what am I going to do if we sink? You know, the Titanic and all that goes That's through That's immediately what I was that, thinking uh, of. Like I'd be, put, I'd screw women and children first. I'd be looking for the next life raft off that thing. Yeah. Yeah. What's the guy who took the, uh, took the kids? She's all I have. Yeah. That was, uh, that was me. <laughs> I like the scene from a yeah. Simpsons movie when they're green days on the barge and the thing just tips up and they're just playing the violins on the way down. I'm like, yeah, that's, yeah. that's <laughs> perfect right there. I mean, yeah. it's, it's something I got to end up doing. I know uh, there's a band 311 that um does these cruises where they go down to the Bahamas a little bit and they get to like, uh you, know, you get to rock out on this cruise. They have like impractical jokers on there. They got all these famous people on yeah. there and stuff. I'm like, it's something I got to end up doing. I mean, I'm not afraid of water and I mean, I can swim, but at the same time, it's like, yeah, if you're str I saw this movie. Okay. Where these people went out on like a, one of those old style, like kind of sailboats and when they got out there, it was just high enough off the water that they had to drop a ladder to get down. So everybody runs and jumps in the water when they're just sitting out there. And the one girl's mm -hmm. left on the thing, and they're calling her a sissy. They're just sitting there calling her a sissy. She's like, oh, get in the water. Oh, she's not going to get in the water. She's too much of a, a good girl. And then she jumps in. And then as they're sitting there swimming around for like an hour, they just look over and they're like, guys, nobody lowered the ladder. And they couldn't climb back up to the boat. So they just sat there floating. And next thing you know, it was been yeah. like eight hours or so. People's muscles are giving up. Then this yeah. dude, like, they're all looking around like, 
where would Justin go? Where would Justin go? And like he's under, like he's like sinking underwater. His, his muscles are going over. And then suddenly, like he's like just stops. And then he like kind of like, I guess like a jump start back yeah. to life. He swims yeah. up and hits his head on the boat. Freaking, freaking on. Um, what yeah. do you call it? Uh, broke his neck or something. So that people were like holding him, trying to get him. But then they got weak enough. And then slowly they all started dying. I'm like, this is why I don't fucking sailboat. Yeah. <laughs> this is why I don't do that. Put the ladder down next time. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. But, but uh, I really appreciate you coming out and doing the podcast. Extra spicy yeah. D. Yeah, it was awesome, man. I'm glad, I'm glad you invited me. I enjoyed it. Um, is there anything you want to promote? You want to promote uh, Harmon's YouTube channel? You want to promote your YouTube channel? Yeah, come check out Harmon Heat. Uh, come check us out live tonight. I'm going to be eating the tube of terror. Uh, it's a pretty serious challenge. So if you're interested, stop on over the Harmon Heat live tonight. It's going to be at 930 uh, Eastern time. I would well people are probably going to be hearing this a few weeks after so we got to yeah. make sure we I'll plug a date before um if you guys go live I like your live videos I think that's super interesting getting uh people asking you questions and stuff I definitely think as a recommendation keep up with the comments of people commenting because I commented like 12 times and then like an hour later you guys answered <laughs> it I was like whoa they're still talking about it oh yeah yeah my bad man he uh Heat now, see Justin should probably jump on that because I can't really see much. I'm trying to get my little studio thing set up here so that I can actually have like some kind of professional setup. But uh, yeah, that's definitely something we're gonna try to do. Try to keep up with people's comments. I think it's also I like the style of the way you guys do it because it it's kind of professional, but it's really more about having a good time. I feel like too many YouTube channels try and go so professional with like scripts and all these types of things. I'm like, you lose the natural conversation of it. I love it when you guys like we're talking about sauce challenges and the next thing you know, you just start talking about the Orioles. I'm like, this is fucking awesome. It's like I'm listening to a podcast. Yeah. Yeah, it's not fake at all. It's not like a, a scripted. A lot of times when I see videos that are scripted or, or something like that, I kind of lose interest because I'm, I'm, I'm not really into the super professional trying to become a, a billionaire uh, type videos and uh, YouTube channels. I just I lose interest really quick. I usually find myself uh, fast forward to the good parts and yeah. then I just click off the video. I, you know, when you keep it real, I feel like, you know, you're a real person. You're keeping it real. I'm more interested in that. You know, keeping it real, man. I can I can live by that for sure. Well, you know what, uh, extra spicy D. I really appreciate you coming out and doing the podcast. I'm gonna make sure I link everything in the description so everybody knows where to find you. Find Justin. Shout out to Justin for helping get this set up too. Um, I guess after both conversations with you and him, I guess we could say that you know you're the more man. You're the man in the relationship. I would say. Yeah. I, yeah. Definitely. Definitely. <laughs>